for that in my workbook as well, showing that the body can store amino acids and you don't have to eat all of the uh, essential amino acids at every meal. And so a ve vegetarian diet, by the medical literature <laughs> standards, mm -hmm. is, uh, is complete in every nutritional way. Hmm. I give the evidence for it there. Yeah. So you do not need to have, uh, people say, well, how do you get your protein? Yeah. Well, there's protein in, in all vegetables, fruits, and grains. I have a vegetable, vegetable protein chart in yeah. my workbook as well, hmm. showing that, uh, that spinach is 49% protein. Lemons hmm. are 16% protein. Everything has protein in it. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about getting it from animals. By the way, why would you want to eat your food secondhand? The cows are smarter than people. <laughs> they get their protein from eating grass. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, and so then you say, well, i got to eat the cow. Yeah. Exactly. And then they say, well, look, look you know, the, the uh, vegetables may have pesticides on them. Well, eat organically grown ones that don't have pesticides on them. But if you even ate vegetables and fruits that had pesticides on them, you washed them or peeled them, you're going to get a whole lot less than if you eat animal products because the cow eats things that have pesticides on it and concentrates those pesticides in the meat, mm -hmm. in its muscle. Yeah. So when you eat the cow, you're going to get a thousand times more pesticides than if you eat the produce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And and this of course also is is you know devastating for for the the, the environment in that sense that that we you know there there's so much fresh water and and um, and grains and all this stuff that goes to waste basically basically because we we humans have so much uh, cattle or cows and <laughs> all right cows are is, uh, I have the statistics someplace and I think I discussed those in one of my uh, videos about how much uh, land it takes to feed, say, a thousand people yeah. uh, if you're going to feed them a vegan diet compared to if they're going to eat meat. Yeah, and yeah. the uh, amount of land that's necessary to feed people uh, an animal-based diet uh, is, you know, huge compared to what it is to feed them a mainly uh, uh, vegan diet. Now, yeah, yeah. the other thing that's very important is... <clears throat> In uh, 1909, the incidence of cancer in America was one out of 33. Mm -hmm. At that time, the average American ate about 200 pounds of grains, uh, and uh, that's uh, two, excuse me, 200 pounds of potatoes, and about 300 pounds of grains. Now, the potatoes were not uh, French fries from McDonald's. <laughs> okay, they were regular potatoes. Yeah. And the and the grains were uh, cooked grains. And so the incidence of cancer in 1909 was one out of 33. Mm. By 1985, the incidence of cancer in America had grown to one out of three. <laughs> From one out of 33 to one out of three. Now, <laughs> what had happened? Yeah. Well, we had changed mainly from an, a um, fruits, grains, and vegetables-based diet to an animal products-based diet. Because mm. during that period of time, the incidence of potato eating of good homemade fresh potatoes mm -hmm. had gone down by 50%. The amount of grains eaten had gone down by 50%. The amount of milk uh, that was being taken in by people went up over 50%. Mm -hmm. The amount of meat eating had doubled, and the amount of chicken eating had gone up 300%. Hmm. And so what we had done was we, we went from a produce-based diet mainly to an animal products-based diet, and the incidence of cancer just absolutely became astronomical. Yeah, yeah. It was one out of three in, in 1985. Now it's one out of two. And it's projected, medicine projects that by the year 2020, everyone in America will develop cancer sometime in their lifetime. My God. All right? Yeah. Now, that does not have to happen. You don't have to get cancer. Mm. You just have to learn the things that cause cancer and stop doing them. Everybody's afraid of cancer. When you're told you have a diagnosis of cancer, it frightens everybody terribly. Yeah, but course. I should say that you should be less worried about that if you know what to do than you are about heart disease. Because, see, 50% uh, of all people with heart attacks, the first symptom is sudden death. <laughs> right? You don't have time to change. Yeah, exactly. But when you get a diagnosis of cancer, all you have to say is, uh, what do I need to change? What do I need to change? Because doctors will tell you, we don't know what causes cancer. I used to say that. 
Well, we do know what causes cancer. <clears throat> and it's on my videos in my, in my workbook because I found it in the medical literature. Mm. I was shocked because we were never taught any of that in our training. Mm. And for years, I never taught it to the doctors I trained because mm. I didn't know it. Yeah, exactly. But you, you have to just think. As I said earlier, you cannot get a sick person well by giving them poison. <laughs> exactly. And if any of you listening have children, I would, I would propose to you the following. Suppose you have a 10-year-old who's perfectly healthy. Well, why don't you let me have him for a few months? And I will give him six weeks of chemotherapy and six weeks of radiation, but don't worry about it. I'll pay for it. It'll be free. And I say, would you do that? You say, no, I'd <laughs> never do that. I say, why? <laughs> well, it might, you know, make him sick, and maybe it would kill them. <laughs> All right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. how about if I say to you, well, now your child is sick. And then you say, oh, I'll let you do chemo and radiation. You won't let me do it to them when they're well, yeah. but you'll let a doctor do it to them when they're sick. That's crazy. Yeah, that's so you desperate, see? yeah. We are sick because our immune cells are not, our immune system is not working right. Uh, God gave us a wonderful immune system to keep us well and to get us well if we get sick. Mm. But we have to stop injuring it. Yeah. You know, if a person came to me as an orthopedic surgeon and had came in and said, look at my thumb, it's just mangled, and it won't heal. And I say, well, what did you do? And I hit it with a hammer. Well, how long ago? Oh, I hit it with a hammer every day. Well, of course <laughs> it's not going to get well if you hit it with a hammer every day. Yeah. But that's what we do to our bodies. We injure them every day by the food we put in our mouth, mm. by by not exercising, by not drinking water, by taking dangerous substances into our body like caffeine and NutraSweet and MSG, mm. and sugar, and all of these things, plus the other steps in the plan. Mm. By the way, uh, we don't have time to talk about that today so much, but what you put in your mind is just as much, just as important as what you put in your mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and yeah, and I hope we can a little bit later talk about the. Yeah. You know some of these things get into that, but um, you know, as you said, there there are so many different things here that that you know I think, as you said, contribute to to why we develop these kinds of d diseases. And I I heard I think it was you who mentioned. Uh, let me see if I can pronounce this. Uh, arachidonic arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid yeah. is in red meat. Yeah, what's that? It suppresses the frontal lobes where you make your decisions on morality and the decisions about how you're going to lead your life and the decisions about financial things. And arachidonic acid in meat suppresses your ability to make decisions. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. <laughs> and and people, people eat this stuff yeah. all day long. <laughs> they just they can't even imagine a meal without animal products in it. Well, I haven't been eating animal products for for now about 14 years. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm totally well and cancer-free. I had yeah. no radiation, no chemotherapy. I had no mastectomy. Yeah. I had a biopsy at two different hospitals uh, to for the diagnosis. But and I thought they could at that time. I thought you could cut cancer out. You can't cut cancer out. Even if the doctor says, I got it all. Mm. Well, that's ridiculous. Because that's like taking a child with chicken pox who's very sick and take him to the surgeon and say, I want you to cut out all the pox marks <laughs> on my child's skin so they'll be well. Yeah. They're not going to be well because the pox marks in the skin are just the local manifestations of a body that is totally sick. Yeah, the yeah. tumor in a cancer patient is only a local manifestation of a body that is sick throughout. Yeah, you have yeah. to change everything about the way you're eating and living in order to get it well. Yeah. You can't just cut it out because if you keep on doing what you've been doing, it'll come back again either in the same place or someplace else or you'll get some other terrible disease. Hmm. And that's why second cancers occur quite frequently in people who survive their first after chemo and radiation, but the second one almost always kills them because they've had such destruction to their immune system that when the cancer comes back, mm -hmm. either in the same place or another place, they have no immune system left to fight it, and so then they die. Uh, hmm. 
And uh, uh, I also wanted to ask you, uh, how about you know things like uh, fermented foods and things like this? Is is this th- something that's necessary considering uh, when you're a vegan? No, no, I do not eat fermented foods. Fermented foods are fermented. Mm. You know? mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't eat fermented foods. I eat fresh foods. You yeah. don't need fermented foods. Uh, I know that uh, that there are uh, like the Ann Wigmore diet and uh, uh, Edie May mm-hmm. uh, had a, a, a cookbook out and they they used a lot of fermented foods. I do not use fermented foods. I don't think they're good for the body. Fermented anything mm-hmm. means it's rotting. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, and I don't yeah. use that. Mm. I only use fresh foods. Yeah. And the more raw food, food you can eat, the better. By the way, uh, I also talk about this on one of my, I've got nine uh, DVDs or videos on health. Yeah, and yeah. I've got a whole CD series, and all of these things are different. Uh, they, they're not, the, the plan is not different. The plan is all the same. Mm. But I found out that people have so many questions about so many areas that um, uh, on Double Blind, What Science Can't See, that's the name of the DVD, I discuss that Linus Pauling, who won the Nobel Prize for, I guess, medicine or peace, both, something, Mm -hmm. uh, was going around the world telling you that vitamin C, high-dose vitamin C, was good for you and could help prevent cancer and colds and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Well, the interesting thing is that Linus Pauling uh, had not done any research on this when he was spouting this. Hmm. None at all. Hmm. All right? And um, I'll tell you how I know that. And not only that, he, he developed cancer and went to orthodox doctors at the end of his life to try to get well and died of his cancer. His wife also developed cancer, so <laughs> how well did that work? Yeah, oh, um, I didn't know that. <laughs> so anyway, he was spouting all this, saying, you know, 5,000 milligrams of vitamin C mm. that you've got to take. And so his the, the, a friend of his who'd been a friend for a long time who ran the Linus Pauling Institute named Dr. Arthur Robinson, mm. he said, you know, you're telling this to everybody. We haven't done any research on this. Why, why don't we do some research? And so uh, he, uh, they set up the, the, the research plan. And what they found, well, they used laboratory animals and gave them the same equivalent doses for the size of the animal. Mm. And they found out that they developed cancer. <laughs> All right, uh, high-dose vitamins, not only vitamin C, but other vitamins they gave in those equivalent high doses uh, cause cancer huh. to grow. And so um, when Linus Pauling found this out, he then confiscated all of his friend's papers mm. and fired him, <laughs> threw him out. All right? Yeah. Now, the reason I know this is I have talked to the friend, Dr. Arthur Robinson. Uh, huh. And he has documented this, and, and uh, Linus Pauling destroyed a lot of his papers, research papers, even research papers that were his before he ever met Pauling. <laughs> and so eventually Dr. Arthur Robinson went to court and and uh, received a judgment of half a million dollars mm. <laughs> against Linus Pauling. Uh, yeah, it's a... But one, one thing they did find out... Mm. And, and he wrote me this in the letter when I had heard about an interview with him, and I I had to, I, I did a search to try and find this man, and I found him, and he, he uh, confirmed that all this is true. Uh, they then, after they used these high-dose vitamins and found out it caused cancer, then he said they went, put the animals on a totally vegan diet, and their, their tumors regressed. Hmm. There we go. <laughs> uh, not only vegan, but it was raw. Raw, ah, big and diet. Yeah, yeah. Regret. Yeah, and the, and the, we should, I guess, stress that too, because uh, you, you do you mostly do uh, just raw foods at this. Well, point? I, I when I was getting well, I did seventy five percent of my food raw. Mm. Uh, all all raw food is even better, but you know sometimes it's hard for people to change over. And in my workbook, I've got a lot of cooked recipes at the back, uh, and then I've got a lot of raw recipes mm-hmm. as well. Oh, excellent. And so uh, when, when you cook food, as you know, you destroy the enzymes. Yeah, enzymes yeah. give life. And I should mention this before we're through with, with the health. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you eat raw food, then you, the food comes in with the enzymes that's necessary to help digest it. If you eat it cooked, all the enzymes are destroyed. You're eating dead food, mm-hmm. and your body has to make the enzymes to... Uh, process 
digest this raw, this cooked food. Yeah. It's estimated that in order for a body to make the enzymes to digest three meals of cooked food a day, it takes the equivalent of eight hours of hard labor in energy. Oh, my. So no wonder <laughs> people are suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia and all these things. Yeah, um, and why they have to have so much coffee to hype them up. <laughs> because they're so tired because they're eating all of this heavy cooked food. Yeah. Of course, a lot of it is animal protein, which is very hard for the body to digest. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the same things that prevent...